And then the slope is given by this quantity, which is the same as this formula right here. And so this is a common trick actually in, in um, a lot of even more complicated models, if they're linear models, is that before you do anything at all, you take your data and you, subtr you subtract off the mean. And that simplifies some of the formulas. So that comes up over and over again in linear modeling. You guys have, so there is some intuition behind, I mean, th there's some intuition behind this formula, right? So um, remember, the covariance measures whether or not the, uh, whether or not these variables are fluctuating together. So this particular situation, so let's say here's the mean of all the data points, x and y. This particular situation is one in which there's positive covariance, right? Because if I pick a random data point, it's very likely that um, uh, delta x and delta y will have the same sign. So because of the orientation of this cloud of data points, the typical fluctuation is either in this direction or that direction. And in this direction, both delta x and delta y have the same, they're both increased. And in this direction, they're both negative. So this. This, this positive covariation then translates into having a positive slope for B. Whereas if uh, the covariation were negative, if the covariance were negative, then what we would see is the cloud of points would be, would be slanted in the opposite direction. All right, so the, uh, the question we had just now was how large was our question? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, how does dividing by the variance help you refine that to give you the line effect? Okay. So it's sort of a, a, it's, it's a notion of normalization. So that's a good question. So we talked about what the sign of B would be and how it makes sense that B would be, have the same sign as the covariance. But why do we have to divide by the variance? Um, and roughly, you could think about that from... Um, it's a, it's a kind of normalization, right? Suppose I took this picture and I just doubled every dimension, right? So everything got expanded by a factor of two. Uh, then we wouldn't want the slope of the best fit line to change. The slope should be the same. But we know that the top is going to, if we expand everything by a factor of two, the top will go up by a factor of four. And the bottom will also go up by factor of four, so that compensates. So it's kind of a, a we have to have a, a result that, that's independent of scale. So again, these are all hand-waving arguments you make after you know the result. <laughs> but it's helpful to have some kind of stories to tell about equations to give them some kind of life in your mind. Any other questions? All right, so the other, um, the other question then was, um, how do we know when the covariance is large? And that is provided by a measure known as the correlation coefficient. So we take the covariance and we divide by the product of the standard deviations. So remember, what's inside the square root is the variance. And so the square root of the variance is a, is a standard deviation. And it turns out that this quantity is uh, bounded above and below by plus and minus 1.
So this is telling you then that, that basically the, the upper bound on the covariance is given by the product of these two standard deviations. Right. And you can prove that by applying the, um, so those of you who know the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, you can use this to prove it follows from this inequality, general inequality, that this correlation coefficient satisfies these bounds. <coughs> so R equals 1 corresponds to the case where these points lie exactly on a line, no deviation whatsoever, and the line has positive slope. And R equals minus 1 would be when the, uh, the, the data points lie exactly on a line, perfect fit, uh, and uh, the line has negative slope. All right, so any questions on this before I go on? So that wraps up. There must be other, let's see, Finney line. No other concerns about Finney line to data? I'm sorry, what is this R again? Okay. So suppose somebody tells you that the, that, so, so we can view it two ways. One of them is that suppose I make a, uh, I, make, I fit my data, my line, my line to some points. And I told you, we solved this, this optimization problem, which was to find the A and B such that the line best fits the data. And now I give you the A and B. Now the next question you'll ask me is, how good is that model? Right? I mean, I can give you the best A and B, but it could be a terrible model. Right? So the correlation coefficient measures how good the, mo how good the model fits the data. And it does so in, in, a, in, a, in this way. You know, this nice aspect of it is that um, is that we have these upper and lower bounds on R, the correlation coefficient, which can be attained when the model's perfect. So how close R is to 1 or minus 1 tells us that. And it also answers this question of, of when do we say that two variables are extremely um, correlated or have a very high covariance. So high covariance uh, means high compared to uh, compared to these, this product of standard deviations. So that's another way of looking at it. Yeah? Um, I, I can't remember like, when you put a line to beta, we use R squared. Uh-huh. Is this a good thing? Oh, OK, good. So, so <coughs> if you write R squared, then um, R squared equals 1 whenever you have good fit to the data. It's not this case 1 and minus 1. So is there any advantage? Um, really <laughs> if you don't like square roots, okay. <laughs> or if you just want to have a one parameter, which um, you know, it's it's a simpler simpler statement. I say the model is good when r squared is close to one, not when I say r is close to one or minus one. Um, yeah, it's kind of, it's it's kind of a preference, right? Sometimes why should I have two? Why should I have both variance and standard deviation? They're the same quantity, really, but. Sometimes it's more convenient to use a square root, and sometimes not. You mean that the, that kind of quantity measures the leading to linear, linear model? That's right. A and B. How, well, how well our linear model, A plus BXI, fits the data, YI? But it doesn't have anything to do with A or B, but um, OK. So. <coughs> So the complaint then is that this is a good, <laughs> good question. So how, if this R measures how good my optimal model does in fitting the data, how come it doesn't have A or B in it? All right. Well, we can answer that a number of ways. One of them, for example, is that this expression for B doesn't have A or B in it. Right. But I think that you're, um, 